In this video we're going to get my Mexican Black King Snake training session evaluated by Laurie Torini from Behaviour Education. So in this session, what I'm actually trying to do is... I'm not planning on overfeeding the amount just to increase repetition, so what I've actually done is taken the one chick that I planned on feeding and I'm actually tearing the legs off to go from one repetition to three. What you've done here, Liam, is perfect. We definitely do not want to sacrifice our snake's nutritional or digestive health for the sake of training. You want to make sure that you're timing your training sessions to go along with your snake's regular meal frequency. And that, of course, is going to depend on the species of snake that you're feeding because some eat maybe every few days, some eat once a week or every couple of weeks, and some may have even a longer latency period between when they eat. That's when you want to train. You also want to make sure that you're not overfeeding your snake during a training session. And so you can divide up your snake's single meal the way Liam has done here by cutting it up or splitting it up in some way. That's not too bad with the chick, but it can get kind of messy with rodents or maybe some other types of feeders. So an alternative is for you to feed several smaller whole prey items that would equal the whole prey item that your snake would normally get fed. So for example, if my snake normally gets fed one weaned rat during a meal, I might feed two rat pups instead of the one weaned rat. That way I can get two training repetitions into that session. Another example would be if my snake normally eats an adult mouse during their meal, I could feed say three fuzzy mice instead of the one adult mouse. And that way I'm getting three training repetitions into that one training session. So one issue that I have been having that is personal to me is that a lot of my snakes get rather excited, which means they strike at the target. And um, a couple of times it has made me jump and I've obviously like jolted and moved the target, which obviously scared the snake and caused an adverse reaction to the target from the snake. That's not something that I want to like reinforce. So my particular focus in this session was actually not only the snake's behavior, but my own, not jolting essentially. So I hadn't done a training session in like six months. So the association between food and target isn't really that strong. So I did wiggle the target a little bit just to get her attention. And then as she comes forward here, she gives me a nice little tongue flick and she actually touched the target right about there. And then I reinforce with the food there. And I just slowly take myself away. This was really nicely done. Because your snake's at a level where they've had some exposure to target training, but they're not a very experienced learner, and there's been a very long latency period between your last training session and this one, I think that you handled this very well, and the snake did very well. She initially was interested in the target being there, and she sort of held in place for a few seconds to decide if she wanted to approach and retreat. And she did retreat. You moved the target a little bit, which really acts as a great prompt to re-engage her attention with it, and that worked. And then she approached the target, she tongue flicked at it, she touched it, and you reinforced very promptly. We always want to make sure that we are reinforcing behavior that we want repeated within one to three seconds of that behavior occurring. And you did that. It went very smoothly. I thought that that was a very nice repetition. You also did a great job of slowly and quietly removing yourself and the training equipment from the environment to leave her there with her reinforcement. At this point, my question is, is should I actually just left that and let her figure out how to ma manipulate the food herself? Was me going with the tongs there and then picking it up and letting her take it again, taking away from the whole point of using the target and then the food coming after the target? Am I breaking association there or does that not really matter? At the point where you moved back in and wiggled the food a little bit so that she re-engaged with eating, the target training repetition is over. That's history to her. It's way more than three seconds since she did the target training session and she has been left for several seconds there with the food item. And you had a couple of choices there. 
You can do exactly what you did, which is wiggle th the food to get her attention back on it and for her to eat it so that you can move on to your next training repetition. Or you could have left her there with it to engage in some natural foraging and hunting behavior. Because you knew that you wanted to do multiple training repetitions during this session, I think that you did the right thing by getting her to go ahead and consume her reinforcement so that you could move on to the next repetition. She's not going to associate the wiggling of the food there with the prior target training repetition because so much time has passed between, it's fine. This is for the second rep and she actually strikes there. So I just hold still, wait for her to calm down, give me a nice little tongue flick after and then I reinforced. And I think that's correct. Yes, that was a great job. That's exactly what you should do. She clearly understood during the second repetition that the target meant a food reinforcer was coming and she got very excited to see it. And that's a prepotent behavior that you see sometimes in all animal training, but especially I've noticed that when we're target training snakes, from time to time they strike at the target because they see the target, associate it with food and strike right away. In more experienced learners, they've learned that the target isn't the food and that they have to perform a behavior involving the target in order to receive the reinforcement from elsewhere. In this case, you did the right thing. You didn't jerk, you didn't remove the target, you just held in place, waited for her to touch the target and tongue flick at it, and then you promptly delivered the reinforcement. That is exactly what you should do. And if you're able to continue that behavior, then the striking should extinguish over just a few more sessions. So now I'm coming in for this last repetition here, which is obviously the whole body of the chick. She gives me a massive strike reaction there. And again, I just held it there, let her give it a tongue flick after, and then I just gently like offered the food. See, I did it differently to last time here. Last time I saw that she was that was fine. She's getting really engaged with the training session now and she's excited when she sees that target because she knows that something pleasing is coming after she touches that target and that's her food reward. So she gave a bigger strike this time and it's not unusual to see a behavior increase in frequency or in um, intensity at first before it extinguishes. And you did the right thing. Again, you didn't move, you didn't jerk away. You just held the target in place until she calmly returned to it, touched it, tongue flicked at it. I couldn't completely see that because her head was behind the target, but I know in the narration, you explained that that's what she did. And then you quietly delivered the food reinforcement and it was done promptly as soon as the behavior you were looking for was performed. And that was the touching the target and tongue flicking at it. You absolutely are correct in not reinforcing the striking behavior. If you reinforce the striking behavior, it will increase in frequency and it will increase in intensity. So you want to ignore the striking. Eventually over time, it should extinguish. You want to reinforce the behavior that you do want, which is the quiet approach to the target, the tongue flicking and touching the target. Whatever the desired behavior is that you want from the snake, that's what you want to make sure that you reinforce within one to three seconds of that behavior being performed. And you did that. Good job. Having trouble like manipulating the food, so I used the tongues to pick it up and give it to her. This time I just left it. I wasn't sure whether... That's fine, since you knew that this was your last repetition during this training session, there was no hurry for her to eat that food. And so you're fine allowing her to just spend as much time with it as she likes and she can exhibit some natural hunting and foraging behavior. That is no problem at all. There's no problem doing two different types of training in the same session, as long as they're separated by time, which they are in this case. So I will sometimes just do target training. Sometimes I will just set up a foraging exercise or a food puzzle for my snake. Sometimes I will just do station training. But oftentimes, especially with learners who need a little bit more of a challenge or are more advanced learners, I will set up these things in combination. So I might do a target training session in combination with the foraging exercise. This is especially effective with pythons who often 
need their food to move around once they find it in order to strike at and eat it. And so I will let them follow the scent trail, find the prey item. Usually what pythons do is they will get into an ambush position above it. And then I will come with the target, have them touch the target, and then I will present the prey item. Sometimes I will also use target training in combined with station training. So I will target the snake to the station, position the snake on the station the way that I would like them, and then I will deliver the reinforcement. So there isn't anything wrong with doing these exercises individually, but you can also combine them as long as the animal's not becoming confused. Oh, I should have done that last time, so this time I've left it. Now she's just happily just eating her food there. There's questions that I was going to ask, which I think obviously I want to learn, and I think people watching the video um, will benefit from, they might have the same questions that I do as well, so. So question one would be, should I have done that with picking up the food with the tongs earlier? Yes, uh, that's question fine. Question two with would be, the with a snake tongs. like this, where if I go to put my hand to pick the water bowl up, and that snake is actually aware that I'm doing that, that snake will be on my hand in no time. So what I'm asking is, if we make sure that we do every single feeding with a target and make sure we get that nice relaxed tongue flick, how long before we can be safe to say that we've broken the association between your hands coming and doing regular maintenance and food? At what point is it just, I see a target, that means food, and if there's no target there, there's no food response? I'm pretty sure you're going to say it's down to the individual snake and how quickly they learn. But I know that you've done it with um, some, some of your own king snakes, so I'm wondering if you had some like, similar issues or how long it took you. It is very dependent on each individual snake. If you have a species of snake or just an individual snake who has a high prey drive and they become very excited over the potential food, then you definitely want to only 100% of the time feed them when the target is present. And in some cases, instead of teaching them to recognize the target for other things like a recall or following it to station, I have a couple of snakes who I just use the target as a signal that food is coming. And I show them the target and food comes. Show them the target and food comes. If they don't see the target, there is never going to be any food coming. And they do learn to differentiate between when the target is there and when it isn't. The one particular snake I'm thinking of that this has worked really well with for me, I can now go into the enclosure, do other things, and get the animal out without a snake hook and without any worries because I don't have that target and he isn't getting into any kind of food mode. However, I have to be very careful because if he even glimpses the target or anything that's the same color as the target, he immediately switches into food mode. So if I'm carrying the target with me to do a training session, I have to make sure he doesn't see it until I'm ready for him to see it. And I have to be careful not to wear anything like clothing or gloves that are the same color as the target because that color is what does seem to be triggering this particular snake to get into food mode. But for him, it's worked extremely well. When he sees the target, he's immediately knowing that food is coming and he gets ready. When he doesn't see the target and I'm moving around the area, he's completely relaxed and I'm able to work with him. Another question I've got is, if I'm doing this with a target and I've never put my hands in there, I mean, I don't, with this snake, I don't actually just put my hand in there and pick it up because I know I'll have it wrapped around my hand. It's not an issue for me, it doesn't really hurt. It's just an inconvenience to sit there for like 20 minutes to wait for the snake to get off you. So what I normally do is use a snake hook and just tailor. So, if the only object coming in is, is the target, and the only thing coming in is food, is it still going to be the association purely with that target? Or is it still going to be things coming in as well? It's going to elicit a food response. Should I actually start introducing other things, like put my hands in to do things, so it's very clear that my hand came in and did something, but no food came, so therefore it's only that red colour target that means food? So in 
Yes, you definitely want to make sure that you're habituating the snake to other activity around the enclosure and other things coming into the enclosure besides the target and the food. You want the snake to realize that food is never coming unless they see that specific target presented. You want the snake to understand that when your hands reach in, when a snake hook reaches in, when um, anything else enters the enclosure, like new enclosure furnishings or a water dish, that that does not mean food's coming and that they shouldn't get excited about that. So you should practice habituating the snake to other things going in and out of the enclosure. But with a snake like this king snake that has a high prey drive and a really excitable food response, I wouldn't start with my hands. I would start with other things going in and out of the enclosure I know that you have to do that with your hands, but make sure that whatever it is between you and the snake is a barrier. So in other words, if you need to change out and clean the water, maybe start with a pitcher or something that's gonna fit in the enclosure that you can hold in your hand and pour water in that's a barrier between you and the snake. And then once the snake is used to that going in and out and realizes, oh, that's not food or anything related to food, then you could go ahead and take the water out and clean it and fill it properly. Or you might use other things to put between you and the animal until you see that they're relaxed and comfortable and realize that no food's coming and then you can work in there with your hands. Or you might even remove the animal from the enclosure first if they're relaxed and comfortable about that or allow them to come out of the enclosure on their own if that is something that they're habituated to and doesn't cause them any distress. And then you can do what you need to in the enclosure. But you definitely wanna habituate them to things going in and out of the enclosure that aren't food and aren't the target so that they start to differentiate a target means food and all of these other things and activities that are happening means that there's no food coming.